Hello everyone. So I want to thank you all for taking a little bit of time out of your day today and learning more about how the curriculum practical training can help with your experience and future careers. So we are excited to have a group of panelists here today that will share their story, their journey in using CPT and their academic as well as their career journey as it after CPT, so that would be a great experience to share. So we want to start by having each of them introduce themselves. So we'll start on this end and have you introduce yourself with your name, your degree, uh, if you've graduated or currently in a program, and then if you're employed at this time, where that will be also. Hi, um, my name is uh, Yilun Wang. I originally come from China. I came to St. Louis, Weber State University last year. I'm still currently still in a MBA student right now. I will graduate uh, next March, and uh, uh, I have been talking to the career center people. <laughs> oh, I think everybody know me already. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you so much. Hello, everybody. My name is Suhani Fernando. And I actually graduated this May with a double major in economics and finance. I am currently interning with the St. Louis Economic Development Partnership with their Division of Innovation and Entrepreneurship. Just a bunch of, it's a lot of words. <laughs> I think Suhani can share some good news with us today also. Yes. Uh, yeah, I'm actually in. currently <laughs> blushing so hard. Right I actually got offered a full-time position last night at a tech startup downtown called Lockerdome. So I will be starting as their finance and accounting analyst. Oh, which yeah. is, yes, it's, it's exciting. So yeah. certainly my CPT was a big part of kicking in, so I'll, I'll talk all about that list later. Great. Thank you so much. Thank Hello, you. everyone. Uh, my name is Ngoc Trung, but everybody likes to call me Ruby, and I like that name. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I graduated um, in May this year um, with Master in uh, Finance, and I was to uh, be in Emerald for the CPT, and right now I, I'm in the OPT at um, West Palo. Hello everybody, my name is Zaheen and I am a graduate student at the Walker School enrolled in the Health Administration program and uh, I'm from Pakistan and uh, Health Administration was an absolutely new field for me. I had been an English language instructor for eight years at Burlitz Corporation and uh, I just wanted to do something different, try a new field. That was a big risk that I took and uh, I, it all started with this uh, coding course that I did. It was a short certification course, and that's where I thought that it, this seems interesting. So that's when I decided that I should pursue a, a degree in this field. And I did my practical training at a doctor's office. It was a, a group of physicians, and it just got over somewhere in October. It was a nine-week CPT. It was a great experience, great learning experience for me. Great. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. Hi everyone, my name is Marcia Santos. I'm from Brazil and I graduate in May this year. And last year, last summer, I had my CPT in a company called Hasma Corporation. And as soon as I graduate, they call me again. So now I'm my OPT and since April I'm working for them. Great, thank you so much. And we'll start just by learning a little bit about your internship or CPT search. So if we could start with Suhani, if you could tell us about what people or resources, uh, programs at Webster or in the St. Louis community yeah. did you utilize to find your search or search for your CPT? Yeah, uh, actually for my CPT, I didn't do it at my current internship. Okay. place. I did my CPT at a tech accelerator program called Capital Innovators. They are located downtown and um, so how I got that was I was just applying to places online. I was looking for places and it was a very short internship. It was just eight weeks and I went only for eight to ten hours a week and I helped them with little projects but my supervisor was extremely kind he let me sit at all his meetings and with their cohorts so that certainly gave me a lot of experience it was an unpaid internship and I didn't care because I got so much good experience as to how a startup works what are their struggles and how 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 do they achieve like overcome these barriers so that's how I 
use my CPT as I didn't look it as, look at it as a way of earning money. I looked at it mostly as a way of trying to getting something more valuable on my resume than all the on campus jobs I had. Okay. So that's how I use my CPT. Great. So Ruby, would you like to tell us a little bit about your search? What resources you used? Uh, actually, when I started with my CPT, I didn't like search a lot. I didn't prepare a lot. Uh, but I went to Work Age. I'm not sure if um, some of you know about that program. Um, and um, I went to a lot of career fair. I went to uh, and I I I. I have a relationship with uh, some of staff at business um, and also in work age program. So through the relationship with um, staff at school, um, and then I applied um, for Amarin, Amarin internship, and then they saw it, and then they um, they just introduced me to Amarin, and then um, I got the internship full time at Amarin. Great. Yeah. So we've heard a little bit about online resources and also face-to-face -face through career fairs. So, mm -hmm, um, yeah. Marcia, would you like to tell us a little bit about your search? Mine was a little bit different. Um, I talked to a lot of people, my uh, my goals. I used to go a lot to um, networking events. So I always, my area is in HR. So one thing that I know about the HR, it's always about the connections, all about who you know. And however, how I found my internship, it wasn't by anybody who works in the field. It was by a co uh, classmate. She was doing. She's an American student. She was doing her internship at Hasman Corporation. And I told her like, I'm looking for an internship for next year. And I started like searching um, six months in advance. And I went to some interviews. And then out of the blue, she called me. So like, Marcia. You apply. Uh, you say that you will look for an internship. So I say yes. Like there's an opening in my company. Can I have your resume? And like yeah. So two weeks later, they call me. I went to the interview and I got an internship. So it was just about the connection. Tell people like your career goals. You never know who you're gonna meet and how people can help you. All right. That's great yeah. advice too. Zaheen, tell us about your search. Well, the resources. Mm, I attended a workshop. Uh, it was conducted by, I'm sorry, I've your name. Tamara. Tamara, yes. It was all about uh, um, strategies, how to look for internships and jobs. Okay. That was that was an eye-opener. Good. And, um, and apart from that, I also attended a um, resume writing workshop. Okay. And there was one more thing. Uh, it, it's called the Walker Edge 101. It's a, it's a zero credit um, tutorial. Mm -hmm. That was uh, very, very helpful and actually uh, uh, putting together a resume and there are were, there were some re really good modules and you also get feedback on that mm -hmm. and I actually got my job through a network contact and um, yeah. Great, <laughs> yeah. so contacts and online resources as well. So yeah. Yulin, could you tell us a little bit about your search? I almost do the same thing okay. like name but I do one more thing, I use a LinkedIn mm -hmm. and LinkedIn. before I go to the career fair yeah, I targeted the company. I make an Excel for the list, target the company, then go to their LinkedIn website, then yeah. add them the HR in the LinkedIn website and talk to them. Um, my name is uh, Ilu Wong. I just recently am a student in the Web University. Then I will meet you maybe tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> I will meet you tomorrow. Then, then uh, at the career fair next day, mm -hmm. I just go to their desk and talk to them. I'm I'm Ilu and I just talked to you yesterday night for the LinkedIn, and mm -hmm. they told me, oh, we have just opening position. Great. You can send me your resume then, I mean. And you're in. <laughs> <laughs> so it sounds like LinkedIn was very helpful in yeah, trying to merge the partnership. So using that in conjunction with the face-to-face -face contact. Yeah, face-to-face. -face. That sounds great. So, so many resources online, meeting people, not being afraid of telling your story to whomever you meet, whether it be classmates or people that you meet uh, during your coursework. So all of those are great ideas. So also, when we talk about the search, we've talked a little bit about it, but how long, let's start with uh, Ruby this time, how long did it take you to identify an internship and uh, when you were in search? Was, was it a month, two months? With the CPTs, it was really fast. Um, okay. 
because I, I, I knew everybody um, okay. here at Webster and um, uh, especially um, I have a really good um, relationship with Rebecca and um, uh, Anne Brown and mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you guys know about uh, those people but they super nice and um, when I just uh, gave my resume to them and then they just took them I mean maybe a, a month and then they just call me back and say that Emirate look at my resume and they really interested to h hire me as a intern during the summer. Okay, great. Yeah, this was so my good. story. So a lot of resources on campus were very helpful. Right, definitely. Good. So honey, how about yours? What was the length of time? Oh goodness. I actually was, my target was to get um, an internship after my, the summer after my sophomore year. I did my internship during, uh, after my junior year, sorry, I apologize. And I did my internship my senior, uh, senior year, fall semester. So I was applying since January and it took a long time. I was talking to campus resources and I was, uh, I was looking through uh, Golok jobs actually, it was had a lot of internships that I applied for and uh, I looked I was just applying online I had a couple of interviews that nothing worked out and then just capital innovators is they after I applied then I was studying abroad in Vienna fall one so I was like I'm kind of studying abroad so I won't be there half the semester and they were very flexible and the, a lot of these employers, like, they understand and they know your college students. So they know you have other stuff going on. And my supervisor, he was super sweet. He was like, yeah, I mean, go study abroad. And it's so much fun and you need, like, just do it. And whenever you just come back, start. So he, that was a nice thing about my internship. So it took me a long time to get there. And it will, for some of, like, some people, you'll get it as easily as in two weeks. But... Sometimes you just have to wait for long. I had to wait for a year and three months to get a job. Okay. So it takes time. Okay. Have patience. Yes. yes. So <laughs> patience is key. Your patience <laughs> is so key. Oh, yes. <laughs> so, Marcia, Always. let's talk a little bit about, uh, we've heard a little bit about the process and how long it might take, but we're also faced with the paperwork of CPT. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about the paperwork and how that process worked for you. Well, it was pretty easy, especially because international advisor are here. She they're, she's so helpful, and I went to a workshop about the CPT, so we have all the explanation, and I was really worried about the dates, so okay, I want to make sure that all my dates are, are going to ask for my OPT or my CPT, and it's going to be available when I have my internship, so first I secure my internship, I got a job offer, and then I applied for my CPT, I don't think it took more than a month or okay. so, it was pretty fast. Okay. How about you, Zayn? Uh, the paperwork you said? Yes. Right. Apart from the CPD approval form, uh, I did not know that there is also um, an internship for credit app form that you yeah. need to fill out. And there is this statement of understanding between the, the uh, employer and the department. So these were two extra forms that I, ha I needed to fill out and get them uh, signed by um, the management department uh, person, the contact person. Yes, In my case, it was uh, Dr. Justin. Um, yeah, so that was the only thing, and it, it was really fast. I must mention Simone Cummings here, who's our, um, who was our uh, course, um, you can say, director or in charge. So she, she's wonderful. She just um, made it happen in, in a day. Good. I would say in a day for me. So That's yeah, great. yeah, so the pretty smooth there. Easy. Yeah. How about you, Yuli? Uh, it takes time. Okay. For pre for prepare to get all the CPD uh, CPD four. I talked to the international student. Uh, talked to the admission office several times. Okay. When when still still Yes, when yeah. we miss. I talk, talk to him several <laughs> times. He, he told he's a so patient. He told, he gave me the detail the list for everything I need. Then I talk to the admission office. Talk to the uh, career center. Come talk to the uh, initial risk mm -hmm. several times. Finally get. Good. Good. Take Good. time. So we heard patience is the key, but it could take as fast as a day and as long as a year, but you have to be patient and get all the required paperwork to make it go smoothly. So when we think about the process, let's think about another way that we prepare in our skills. So let's start with Marcia. Marcia, can you tell us about any experiences or skills that you developed prior that prepared you for your CPT? 
So um, before I applied for my internship, I used LinkedIn and I was searching for people with the same uh, goals that I had and I was looking at their skills. What are the things that they know that are used in the, the current job? So from that, I was really putting all my effort on doing my classes, my, for example, the HR classes. Like, okay, I'm gonna like study more this subject because I know that in the future it's something that I'm gonna use. So it was more um, by searching, like my, my goal was to be the HR intern. What do they do? And what do I need to know in order to be more prepared for what was coming for me? Okay, great. So that helped to look at profiles of people that oh, yeah. have already mm -hmm. been down that road. That's mm -hmm. good. Now, Ruby, what did you do to prepare and give you the skills that you needed to be successful in your CPT? Um, I told you that I got uh, just a, a, a month to got, to got my uh, CPT, but it took me a long time to prepare for everything. Okay. Um, first time, when I first applied to Webster, I was I, I, I have a goal that I need to take on an opportunity that I can uh, improve my skills and improve my work experience because actually I I think if you have a like experience in working, it will help you a lot in the future. Sometimes studying is good, but working experience is important too. Yes, yes. So uh, I I. I didn't deny on it. Opportunity come to me. I apply for many, many jobs in campus first, okay. and then uh, I started with uh, doing um, lab assistant, which I have no idea what I need to do. And I, my major is finance, and and, and computer <laughs> is like a nightmare. <laughs> but uh, but I think that if I just uh, take it and improve my skills and, and just learn something new, it's never, never like it's useless, you know. And um, I, I have, um, I started and then I worked like three months in lab assistant. And then my supervisor um, really liked me and, and when I applied for a job at uh, graduate assistant um, at an at, uh, office of mission where Verena worked over there too, and uh, my supervisor uh, super liked me. And and when um, the uh, my the supervisor from from F, uh, admission call him and ask how I worked over there, and then he said, okay, uh, she's good and everything. And then I got a job at graduate assistant, not because I'm the good person or not because I'm the best person, but because I worked hard and I know people. <laughs> and then I, I I transferred to be a graduate assistant over there, and I I got um, a lot of experience in, and it's also a different field of my major because it's focused more on communication than my major. Okay. But I improve like in the computer, and then I improve my skill in community uh, communication, and then I work with people. I know how like I. I know how the culture in America and how they work in here is very important. And, um, and then CPT is also really valuable in my career because uh, I went to a big environment, like a professional environment, and I talk to people, I, I listen to them, I observe how they work. And then I really like learned a lot of lessons, even though not really, I'm not a smart person or I'm not like special, but I try in a lot in my life and trying to improve my skills in many ways and always take the opportunity to, to improve and to develop yourself. Good. That's important. So Ruby, it sounds like you took advantage of really fine tuning communication skills mm -hmm. and your interpersonal skills in working as a team right in wherever, whatever environment you were right. in so those are skills sometimes you can't find in the classroom those come from work experience mm -hmm. and being around others so right good. now Suhani I know that you have worked on campus and yeah. had other experiences right. let's talk about some of those experiences and how they prepare you for your more prof professional yeah no absolutely I really like something that Ruby said it's just that it doesn't have to be confined to your major I was an economics and finance double major I worked as 
a customer service associate at housing. I was a program manager for campus activities. I was office assistant for the dean of students. And I was a student ambassador. And I also ran a national organization. So these are nothing to do with economics and finance. I honestly did nothing <coughs> with my major. The only thing was my ACPD. So, but still, those gave me the skills to uh, the opportunity and the experience to work and what it's like to work in a team, what it's like to initiate pro projects and what it's like to lead. And it's just those things that employers look for. They look, f they don't, as much as they do value, okay, what's your degree, what are your grades? They also value what can you bring to the table? And what are your skills? How can how can you be a benefit to our company? What are the skills that you have that no one else in our company has? So it's things like that. So even these random projects that you do, yeah, I, I organize casino night. Mm -hmm. So it's like what what is what does that have to do with like uh, internship in economics? But it just shows I I know how to like. Uh, organize a big event I know how to prioritize and I know how to get stuff done and it's just things like it's just you you don't have to have do something of your major to uh, be uh, to show that you can do your work and yes knowledge is important but also practicality is also extremely important so I would say my work that I did or my on-campus involvement certainly was a huge key for me to get my internship mostly because as internationals as especially undergraduate internationals we come we don't we don't have work experience all that we have is what we've done on campus we don't have any professional work experience so it's that getting your foot in the into the door you have to prove your prove that you are worth it and that you can you have the skills and you have the drive to work in such an environment so it doesn't have to be directly related and don't feel bad if it doesn't so I I've, I got a lot of my f professional jobs through all this on-campus stuff that I did that has nothing to do with my major. Yeah, great. Yeah. So it taught you other skills. It teaches you other skills that are so valuable and it could help you tremendously. Great. Yeah. Gillen, tell us a little bit about some of the skills that prepare you for your CPT. I agree with her some points, and uh, the major, I'm, my major is MBA, and uh, my CPT job is an IT company oh, okay. in the downtown St. Louis. IT and MBA, though equal, is a totally different thing. The computer science and uh, math business major is totally different, but it gives me a good experience and put a, put a good experience on the resume, and after the summer internship, my supervisor, I don't know, she really, really likes me. She uh, write a recommendation letter for me for okay. future use for the for the future job search and uh, personal experience. Last for last year, I come Webburst. I I had actually I had my bachelor degree in the United States too, okay. in the Kansas State University with major accounting and finance double major. Then last year I come here, I tried to apply the Big Four Price World House, but I failed. Even uh, last thing happened, the HR didn't give me any response back. But after this summer internship in the IT company, st still uh, not an accounting uh, firm, but I get the PwC, the Price World House interview mm -hmm. next day. Wow! I have a, I have, tomorrow I have an interview with him. Yes! Mm -hmm. That's, yes. Oh, yes. That's so cool! Assistant. That's what helped also. Good, good. Now, uh, Zaheen, you talked about how your experience, you were looking for a change. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit about, and tell the audience about, um, a little bit of your experience prior to your CPT. Prior to, as in like my previous uh, yes. job? Mm -hmm. Okay, my previous job was that of an English language instructor, and that too at Berlitz. I don't know, uh, uh, a lot of you know about Berlitz or not, but then they have an absolutely different methodology of uh, teaching a language. It's very, very interactive, and I was in the habit of uh, uh, being uh, having a very lively uh, kind of a classroom where, um, um, it was a two-way kind of communication. It was not like a typical grammar classroom where mm -hmm. one person stands and lectures to the class. It was, it was very interactive. So at Berlitz, I learned a lot of uh, things like teamwork. Okay. And then apart from that, uh, being very open and uh, more extroverted.
towards your that I think that thing helped me the most here uh, in the United States because here people are more uh, assertive in their manner they're friendly and they are open direct so that thing at Berlitz I think uh, uh, helped me out a lot in actually uh, engaging with people uh, yeah socializing with them so that was and of course um, a lot of organizational skills I learned here I would say <laughs> very very yes. organized yeah as far as especially da uh, data when you're dealing with data and everything, so yes, I would say. Great. Yeah. So again, those are skills, those soft skills that employers yes, look for, absolutely. like teamwork and communication skills and organization skills that sometimes you don't get in the classroom, uh, but through projects and through experiences, whether it's through an organization like Suhani spoke of or Ruby when she talked about her experience on campus, those are skills that you can apply to CPT and then beyond. So. When we talk about CPT and going beyond CPT, uh, Marcia, did you discuss opportunities of OPT with your employer um, that you actually had your CPT? Did you so talk about what, what next? My first experience uh, working at the States was CPT during summer. Okay. And they actually asked me to stay until the end of the year as part-time student, so I took the CPT uh, credit, like 20 hours a week during the fall. So and as soon as I finished my CPT in December 2014, they asked me, so how about next year? <laughs> and I was, okay, I have to apply for my OPT. And I wasn't expecting that they were expecting me to go back to work for them. So I took a three month uh, break to apply for my, CP my OPT. And as soon as I got my OPT, I let them know, like, so I got my OPT, like, okay, come work on Monday. So I've been with them since April. They know my situation, that I need a sponsorship. So since it's, uh, my field of work, it's HR. It's not really like I, they have to build a case to tell, like, why we need you for a sponsor at H1B. So since they really like me, they are trying to build a case. So uh, what they're trying to do with me is make me travel all, because our company is global so and if I'm able to travel that would be something mm. of like a special occupation that I would have like be able to travel and I speak Portuguese and Spanish so and I have already had the opportunity to go to uh, Chino, California and to Georgia and Texas too uh, all because of my language skills oh, okay. even yes. though HR is not a different like to diverse, diversify type of um, occupational, I don't know how you guys say, like, it's not, I'll, there is not like a special skill for, to be in HR, like in IT, it's not technical, but that is always a way that you can use the language skills to do your job. That's great. So I'm just hoping I get my H1B. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> how about you, Ruby? Uh, did you discuss OPT or HB1 sponsorship with your employer at that you actually were doing mm -hmm. the CPT with? Yeah, I, uh, like I said that I was a CPT with uh, Emeron, but unluckily that they didn't keep me and I didn't uh, <laughs> negotiate everything because I know that they need to push an in computer uh, like feel or some people good at software. Um, but in finance, I don't think that they, they're gonna sponsor or something or or maybe they not a good fit over there, but um, I, but I got a lot of lesson over there, and I I was really like grateful that I got that opportunity. And uh, about my OBT, I I took like a long time, maybe seven months, and went to website and search and applied for like a hundred. Um, I I could say like a a hundred companies <laughs> and a uh, hundred. Uh, Position. I worked really hard, um, and um, I, I applied online, and I applied through a uh, Webster uh, Golok website. Golok <laughs> but uh, Golok mm -hmm. job website was really super super helpful because once I applied through Webster, they will call me for an interview, and I got a lot of interviews after I applied for Webster Golok, mm -hmm. and it's. But when I went through the career websites of the company, nobody, just mm -hmm. like 
even though I applied for a lot, but no one like respond me. Like, sometimes it's one or two, not a lot. But when you apply through Webster, mm -hmm. you're gonna get response fast, Good. really fast. Good. Yeah. Now, Tahing, you talked about your experience as an uh, ESL teacher. Yes. And then moving to healthcare administration. Mm -hmm. So with your CPT, uh, did you do it within a company for the healthcare administration? Uh, it was more of a uh, provider reimbursement okay. department where I had to work with claims and follow up on claims and claims that were denied and get in touch with insurance companies and find out what the reason was okay. and then resolving it and rebilling and then following up on them and then also putting together an audit document for the practice manager that she would use to audit provider's soap notes. So yeah, that kind of... So that uh, work is more aligned with your degree program? So have uh, yeah. you talked with them yeah. about OPT or what will happen after you complete your CPT? Um, they were supportive about the OPT, mm -hmm. but I myself would want to explore more okay. and look for something bigger and better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So our next question will talk more about um, your experience, and uh, some of you have really talked about it already, but the things that you took away from your CPT experience. So we'll start with Marcia. Just what are some of the things that you learned um, and can definitely apply to your career that you learned during your CPT experience? Um, this, besides the technical skills, the things that you learn within the job, there's a, a lot about to interpersonal skills because sometimes I would be, for example, interviews would be terrified, especially because being an international student, sometimes you, well, I would say about myself, I would be self-confident in regards to my accent. I would not lie to you. I would go to an interview like, oh my gosh, do they understand what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> and I think uh, interpersonal skills, talking to people, um, learn how to prioritize, it's really important. To never be late in your appointments, meetings, I'm from South America, you guys already know that. <laughs> so, um, it's more about like the manners and how you act in a professional environment. And always be willing to learn more. It's just not because you work on that, <coughs> excuse me, you doing your job. It doesn't mean that you cannot do something else. You always, for example, I only got my CPT, my second CPT during the fall because I offer help. My uh, department was HR operations, so I worked with the old data, I9 verification kind of stuff. However, there, few, there were a few times that I was just bored, like what I'm doing now. So I would go to the HR coordinator, talent development, so you guys have something that I can help with? So being always like willing to help. Mm -hmm. And then they need an intern for the fall. So. I started working for them in the fall. So I learned many different things by being open to learn okay. and to always offer, like, to need some help. Yeah. So that's one thing that I learned. Like, it's not just do your job, but do your job, but be proactive. Okay. Try to do something, always something else. Initiative, that's great. Yeah. And you let, tell us about what you learned during your CPT experience. I have learned a lot because I just told you before my major is different for the my CPT training uh, company is IT company. I I only can first uh, first month I come I uh, the internship is three months first the first two weeks I only can help the Excel okay. for build the database for Excel I have I have must experience for the Excel. Then only can help Excel. Then I try to talk to my boss. Can I learn a lot? You can teach me. Then they, they start training me for the basic computer science for the HTML, CSS, okay. and SEO stuff. But now I can make a web page for the HTML, <laughs> CSS. That's great. <laughs> they training me, and uh, like like this summer I took feels like this summer I took the computer science class, and is it free? <laughs> that's great. So you've got a lot of technology experience. Yeah, that better than not, before. That's great. <laughs> on the job training. How about you, Savani? Well, one thing that I really learned uh, from my internship is how important it is to know people. And I didn't realize that because the St. Louis entrepreneurial ecosystem is heavily connected. It's like everybody knows everyone. It's like its own little like click. 
Uh, it really is. <laughs> so for me, working at Capital Innovators really helped get my internship where I'm at now. Because my current supervisor knows, my former supervisor, like, oh my goodness, I know him. We went to school together. Like, who knows? Like, and then, so that connection really helped. And it just, it's like a snowball effect. So my job, which I got offered last night, my current supervisor, she's like, oh my goodness, I know the CFO. We've known each other for 10 years. Like, it's so important that you just get yourself out there. And I constantly, like, I went for event. I went for, like, startup connection and all, like, project like uh, events with the St. Louis Mosaic project like events that will really I I know will impact my careers and just get your face out there because your supervisor they know they know that you're not here for they know that you're here for experience and they know that you need to get yourself out there so we like feel free to go talk to them it's like hey is there someone in this field where who I can talk to and they'll be more than happy to help like your supervisors are there to help you, not to boss you around. <laughs> and they are there, f- they, people genuinely care for you to succeed, especially when you're an international student. And just don't be afraid to put yourself out there. Even if you feel uncomfor- uncomfortable to do something, just, just do it. If you make a fool of yourself, it's a good story to tell one day when you're just like, oh, what's the most embarrassing thing you did to yourself? <laughs> then you have a story for yourself. So just... Put yourself out there and just meet people constantly. Keep meeting people. And even if you don't remember their name, you remember their face and they will remember your face and you still have that connection. That's so important. Good, good. Yeah. That's some great advice. So really talking more about the advice you have for the students that are here that are searching for the CPT and going through that experience right now. Ruby, can you tell me what advice do you have for students who have attended today really looking to learn more about the CPT experience and what they can expect? Um, can I verify a little bit? Like what, what skills they need or no, what, what experience? What advice would you have for someone who is looking for CPT at this time? Oh, uh, patiently, is that in, <laughs> patience. Just patience. Just um, patience. Just uh, search online and uh, try in to involve with a lot of activities at school. Get to know people, and uh, even though you're not a social people, but because this is something will help you. If you not like, you just like I don't like to talk or something, and just practice you practice like go into the event where no like stressful no you don't need to have the responsibility for everything just volunteer open to talk and from the activities from the event from like trying to make friends from that will help you to go to the high level when you go to career fair or you go to some like event like more professional events. It will just you just come naturally and don't 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 let your accent hold you back because let people get familiar with whatever you say. <laughs> <laughs> just like if you say you you think that oh my accent I I'm scared that people are not gonna understand me or everything, it will hurt you, it will harm you, not like but people look at you, you're not confident. confident. How are they going to hire you when you're not confident about yourself? So just uh, let people get familiar with whatever I say, I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. Just put yourself out there, right, Ruby? Right. And one thing I know I Ruby has been out there because I see Ruby at a lot of things. <laughs> right. <that I> <laughs> yeah. And one thing I want to add to what Ruby said is just exhaust your resources. Mm-hmm. Just use everything you have like I have spoken to advisors my professors my boss like I have directly some I came to a point where I was like I'm looking for a job this is what I'm looking for do you know anyone who's hiring like I have directly asked people that and what's the worst they can say is no Mm -hmm. at least you have you don't regret not asking that and just don't be afraid like it's it's you're asking these people because you feel comfortable with them so, and even if they say, oh, I don't know, but let me ask someone I know, they will see if they could pull some strings for you. So, just exhaust your resources. It's fine. Yeah. yeah. Don't be afraid right. of the no. Exactly. <laughs> just don't, like, you'll get a, so many no's. Like, if I, have to, if I had a penny for each no I got, I'd be a freaking millionaire by now. <laughs> so, yeah. People 
people <laughs> like when you open with them and you exactly. tell them your story yeah, because yeah. they they get bored of whatever <laughs> people and say yeah. here it's just like and the also, same all the time but you are different right. from the other country you're and different. also if you like ask them it's an ego boost for them because they're like you ask them and like oh my goodness they think I'm so cool that I could help them out <laughs> they feel good so yes. just use like just do it <laughs> so Zaheen you've gone through a career change almost with yeah. moving into healthcare administration so what advice would you have to students that are looking for their first CPT experience and then beyond okay um, first things first uh, you need to step out of your comfort zone if you really want to know what you can do uh, I thought that I would be an English language instructor for the rest of my life. I have a degree. My first degree was in English linguistics. So I thought, okay, I'm certified. I've got a degree. I've got CELTA. And I'm equipped. And this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. But then there does come a point where you, when you feel kind of not burnt out. I don't know whether it would be right to say burnt out. But then you, you want to see that what else can I do? Is there something else that I could do? So it's a, it's, it's a risk. But if you're a risk taker then I would say that, yes, get out there and see, and you would end up surprising yourself that, wow, I can also do this and uh, that and that. And it's a very systematic process. CPD, searching for a job is a very systematic process. And attend, I would suggest that attend all the workshops that Webster has to offer, all kinds of, anything by career planning and development is a must. Do attend that. And uh, if you can, enroll for Walker Edge 101, the way they guide you for uh, making your resume and branding yourself and interviewing skills as well. I mean, that's terrific. I mean, there are great resources out here. And lastly, I would say um, it's a time-consuming process. Start planning uh, like four to five months before. A lot of their companies, they have their internships for summers. I didn't know that. And I had decided that I would do my internship in fall. And then uh, I would I missed out on all of them because they were just for summer. So I would say start doing uh, your research. Make a list of your target employers. That these are the places that I would want to work for. And then check out their websites. They have a lot of information about their uh, listings on the website. And see whether the, the opening that they have, does that match your uh, CPD time frame that you have chosen for yourself. So, um, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think Zaheen hit a, a really key point in the search because I know that working with our employers that come to the career fair, they are moving that schedule of hiring students back because those that are at the career fair in October are oftentimes looking for their interns for the following yeah. summer. Yeah. So that's October, and they're looking for interns for that next June. Yeah. So definitely, as he said, you want to make sure that you're on the timeline of the employer's hiring process, because if they're looking, some of them make offers for fall of the next year internships and summer of the next year internships, they make them in November before our students go on their Thanksgiving um, breaks and then also into the uh, winter holiday breaks. But they are making those offers earlier, so it's important to stay on their timeline um, also. Because one thing you want to do is make sure that you're not thinking about your own recruiting schedule. Like, for instance, I'm looking for a summer internship, so I'll start looking in April for something in June. That doesn't always work for the organizations. So making sure that you keep in touch with their timeline as far as the hiring process as well. That's yeah. great. So really just to wrap up things, I, I think that you guys have heard some great advice. Do you agree <laughs> from all the panelists? This has been great advice. They've been willing to share their experiences. So we want to really know um, what's next for each of you. And I think we've heard some good things from Suhani. She's very excited <laughs> about the opportunity. So I'm I still tell giddy. Us, tell us a little bit about that opportunity. You said the company is Lucky? Uh, Lockerdome. Lockerdome? It's, okay. uh, it's a tech startup downtown. And it's about seven years old. And um, they have about they have two offices, one in St. Louis. and uh, St. Louis is mostly the developers and the technical parts. And one in New York, which is mostly their ad department and I let me see okay I got that I saw I actually found the the position online on cultivation capitals website cultivation capital is a venture capital firm here in St. Louis and I applied through their website and one my one little secret that made me stood out is that I didn't write a cover letter and because I was writing I was like writing my cover letter and I got 
I got bored writing my own cover letter, and that's that's a bad sign. So what I did was I wrote a I did a whole online slide deck as to why they should hire me, and I was not I was not formal. I was the that's probably the sassiest presentation I've ever made in my life. <laughs> I pretty much said this is why you need to hire me. This is why I'll be great, and I was so upfront with them, and they they liked it. So it's just think out of your box and just do it. And I had four interviews with them. One was for about forty-five minutes one day, and the other one was for about an hour and a half with three people. It was stressful, but it was worth it at the end. <laughs> and and yeah, so it was uh, it was it's just you have to be patient, and your your the opportunity will come. It's just that you have to keep trying. Just keep be you. I have spent nights, uh, sleepless nights, applying for jobs and like talking to people and all that. Just there came to a point. Oh, the summer is like screw it. I'm going home, <laughs> but I just didn't go home apparently. <laughs> and right. so, just just keep keep working. Think out of the box. Think of ways that makes because that works for me because I'm a really bubbly person for an economics major, which is unheard of sometimes. <laughs> and so, because of that, just think out of the box and just be be yourself. Because if you go for an interview. And you, you're not yourself. You will not find the perfect job for you. You have to be yourself from the point you apply for it, and that's when that's when the opportunity will come to you. And that's one thing I've learned through like trying to get this job at Locker Dome. Oh, great! We yeah. wish you the best of luck. Thank you. So, Yulin, tell us about your next step. I have several interview.、Uh, I have one tomorrow for the Pride One House. Okay. And.、Uh, Two for one for Wells Fargo, one for Scout Tree next week. Oh great! So I'm getting excited. Yeah. So you wish you <laughs> luck. That's great. That's a lot of interviews. Ruby, what's the next step for you? Ah,、uh, my steps are just trying to do、uh, to do the best what I'm doing now, and、uh, and then we'll maybe after a year we'll negotiate with them. <laughs> And、uh, if I'm not gonna get it, I will try to the other opportunities because、uh, I got a lot of like I was trained to be good in the interview, and I went to a lot of interview, and I was really confident about that. And I will start、uh, again with my、uh, just trying to apply for a job and and just search for a job and doing start one more time. As I did for OPT six months, and maybe we'll try again for my、uh, H1B. Okay. <laughs> But、uh, I'm really like just positive about everything. Try the best what you're doing right now, and I'm not really.、Uh, I have to get it or something. If I can't not get it, we'll go home, and、uh, yeah. we'll have a lot of opportunities at home waiting for me. Okay, great. So, okay.、Sorry. Yeah. Um, for、uh, the OPT, I would say that the, there's a good one good thing that you don't need to have the job offer at hand, just like the CPD does. That you need to have a job before you actually、uh, apply for it. So that's one good thing.、Um, I was、uh, targeting not-for-profit organizations because I've heard that they are cap exempt, they, they、yeah. don't、uh, mm-hmm. H-1B. So I was advised lately that apart from other companies, you look target not-for-profit organizations、okay. also. So that's what I'm aiming to. Sounds great. Yeah. Good. And Marcia. Well, if everything work out, work works out with the company that I'm in right now, I'm probably going to stay with them. But if you're not, we never know because it's just up in the air so far.、Uh, since I'm having my experience in HR operations and I work with HR, IS, information systems, so data and computer, I'm planning on get my master's in information technology,、yeah. especially because I'm a field that is. Growing a、yeah. lot nowadays, and being in HR, like one thing that I can notice of my field of work,、uh, there's a lot of strong people with interpersonal skills, but with the technical skills, it's a little bit, it's not as much.、Mm-hmm. So having the technical skills plus the interpersonal skills, I think it will make me a differential、um, professional, different professional, more just diverse. Just Diversify. Yeah, more marketable.、Mm-hmm. That would be great.、Yeah. So as we wrap up, we have about seven minutes, and we'll open it up for questions from the audience. If you guys have questions of our panelists, this will be a great time to ask. We have one here. Yeah. So、uh, as you, Zahim mentioned,、yeah. uh, I guess it's more like a technical side of the CPT, but so you have to 
find a job before you apply for so Yes. That's the case. Yes. Okay. And uh, Marcia mentioned like you did 20 hours of. Uh, yeah, I first during the summer week. was full time my CPT, mm -hmm. and then I applied for an extension just as a class. And I get I get to work twenty hours per week for. So how many credits that be for twenty hours a week? Uh, I don't remember right now. <laughs> Probably three. Okay. Oh, two. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes depends what I think depends how you feel. I think one credit hour is seven hours. Seven hours of work is one credit hour or something like that. I'm because I remember mine was eight hours a week and that added up. I, it ended up being like one credit. I I worked for like one credit yeah. hour. So. It might be summer was three credit hours yeah, and three. then fall one credit hour. I okay. honestly remember. Yeah. <laughs> and then would you you can also ask your faculty yeah. member mm -hmm. who you're working with in order to get your credit for that as well. Bethany, did you want to? Yeah, I was just going to mention it. It varies depending on department. Yes. Yeah, okay. How that formula is assessed. So you need to talk to your faculty advisor to find out how many hours of work a week would equal one credit hour of internship credit. Because each school and college has a different way of determining that. Okay. Have any other questions? They've shared their story. Now you can ask any questions. No other questions? Good. Did you find it helpful? Did you find yes. everything helpful? Great. So we want to thank our panelists. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much yes. for being here yeah. today and sharing your story. And yeah. I think this is one more connection you have. <laughs> so if you don't know them already, feel free to come and introduce yourself so that we can work together so that everyone can have CPT experiences that are very successful. So thank you again. Thank you. Well, thank you.